This video was made possible by Honkai Impact 3rd. Thank you for signing up to our tour at the Modern Zoo of Anime Fans. Here you will be able to learn and observe different breeds of the species known as the Anime Fan. Please do not attempt to feed any Anime Fan you see as they live on a very strict diet of food, water, and trashy isekai power fantasy shows. There's been a lot of research of the type of anime fans that exist, but documentation of modern fans are less common, as many well-known ones are now actually endangered or extinct. These include the commonly known casual, weeaboo, and elitist. These primitive forms have now evolved into many different breeds. For example, now that the anime plague has become far more widely spread and accepted, it is harder to classify who is actually a casual anime fan and who is just a normal, healthy human. Thus, we present the new classification model for the modern anime fan. We start with the lifestylist. The lifestylist has taken over as the modern image of anime fans and takes a more business casual approach towards anime. Many of these are ex weeaboos or otaku that have now grown up and found this awful new thing called... a life. While they may have had countless hours to sink into anime when they were young, they may find these slight annoyances have cropped up like colleges or working to pay rent and trying not to starve to death or, god forbid, a girlfriend. That means they have far less time for anime, so they need to optimise it. This means mostly watching things they hear being discussed by friends or, if they're really desperate, might even resort to watching YouTubers to give them recommendations. <clears throat> they are, however, still very knowledgeable about anime and its culture, so may end up spending more time discussing anime in person or online than actually watching it. A trait also reminiscent of the Mima. It is argued whether a Mima really counts as an anime fan or not because there has yet to be a recorded sighting of the species actually watching anime. Not including hentai, of course. However, you can find them in pretty much every facet of the anime community as it is theorised they are able to completely keep up to date with anime entirely through memes, absorbing the surrounding memes for information in a process called osmemesis. They are pretty easy to recognise as they have developed a unique language of communication through GIFs, shit posts, and smug anime girls. Though the fully mature of the species can be spotted at pretty much every convention wearing the fucking Ahegao hoodies. It is unclear where the species normally resides in the real world, but rumours suggest that many of them are currently looking to buy property on r slash anime memes. This brings us to the collectors. The collectors have spent way too much money on anime and they themselves cannot remember how they got in this position in life, nor how to stop it. They are the Pokemon trainers of this world, except instead of catching Pokemon, they catch waifus. Under no circumstances should any of them be allowed within a 10 mile perimeter of any device that can play gacha games. And it is documented that they would even probably invest in cryptocurrency if it gave them a chance to get their waifu. Despite their spending habits, they never plan to spend money. It just kind of happens. Once they think they reach a period of financial stability when they no longer feel the urge to spend, is when there is a perfectly timed summer event announcement with new limited edition swimsuit version waifus, and the next thing they know they are googling how to sell their left kidney on the black market to make more money. It is a common misconception that collectors have a lot of disposable income, when in fact all they may possess a lot of is a lack of budgeting skills. If we break down a standard monthly budget and show it to a collector, $200 in food, $700 in rent, $150 in utilities, $1,500 on anime figurines, and $2,000 on rerolls in Fate Grand Order, they will look at this and wonder to themselves, wow, am I really spending that much money on food? And on that note, I think it's the perfect time to introduce the sponsor for today's educational video, Honkai Impact 3rd. Honkai Impact is a- oh, oh, for God's sakes, of course you'd be here. Honkai Impact is a free-to-play action mobile game. Yes, these graphics and gameplay you are seeing right now are really running on my phone, and it is running smoothly as well. What starts as an action game with a simple attack dodge system quickly increases in depth when you unlock more abilities, combat, Combos, different characters, chaining abilities with different characters while parrying, dodging, and air juggling, and it evolves into an incredibly satisfying real time combat system that will have you hooked. You have a wide array of different waifus to unlock with their own unique fighting style with customizable weapons and abilities to suit your playstyle as you play through the existing story mode or even use the co op features. The game is constantly being updated, with the most recent addition being the dorm feature. Build a nice little house for your girls to rest in where they can train up in their spare time and generally just look absolutely adorable. No, 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 no. these aren't yours. Go get your own. Go get your own! If this sounds like your cup of tea, or if you just want to try it out anyway, then click on the link below to download it on either iOS or Android. And with that, we can go back to our tour. Moving on next, we have the Hype Beast. The Hype Beast has one goal in life 
to get hype. Ever since experiencing that first spine-tingling, goosebump-inducing feeling, they live their life chasing that next high, and will watch every anime fight, sports, anime, and studio trigger show hoping to be able to reach that same high they once felt. Understandably, they are mostly rooted in the shonen genre, and while they argue that the genre has become more respected critically to enjoy for older ages, this is just so they can hide the fact that they are all secretly man-children nursing their inner sugar-high 12-year-olds where everything was naturally hype. Similarly to hype beasts, we have cancers. Cancers only care about one thing cute anime girls, and every one of them is equipped with a built-in navigation system that will cause them to gravitate towards the nearest source of Moe. Unlike the rest of the community arguing over waifus and best girls, cancers only believe in spreading love and acceptance for every girl. Every girl is deserving of love, because every girl is Moe, and if the answer is Moe, there can be no wrong answer unless the answer is Nico. Studies have shown that this overexposure to Moe has deteriorated the average specimen brain into a mindless, mushy goop, effects of which can be seen when they gather in one place, dividing uncontrollably to form a massive, unwanted lump that spreads, infecting the surrounding area with fanboy roars of Moe love, hence the term, cancer. Public sightings are rare, so many assume they are shut-ins who do not exercise. In truth, they are merely hibernating, conserving their energy to the next idol concert where they are able to release all limiters, doing a workout that breaks all known laws of physical human exertion within the space of a single aqua song. And then we get to the intellectual. Evolved from the now endangered elitists, the intellectual is on a journey to prove anime should be a deeply respected medium through nuanced analysis and critical discourse. But deep down they know they are just looking for a way to justify the countless hours they have sunk into watching anime with no tangible achievement or merit to show for it. The biggest difference between them and old school elitists is that in this day and age, anime is such a wide medium so there is no longer a widely accepted right taste in anime, and it is more about being able to provide a deeper, well-informed justifications for one's taste. However, while many intellectuals may seek to enlighten the uninformed casuals, some may use their newfound powers to put themselves up on a pedestal. Perhaps they'll still unironically judge people by the number of entries on their My Anime list like it's still 2000. 2008, proving that while there is no right taste in anime anymore, there is still definitely a wrong one. Though a close cousin to the intellectual, we have the Animation Taku, a new species that has arisen very recently within the anime fandom. The Animation Taku is a black hole for any and all knowledge about anime production. They can tell you the coffee girl who was working during production on a certain episode of anime and follows approximately 7,000 different animators on Twitter. While they still technically enjoy anime, the anime itself is an insignificant factor when compared to the knowledge of the staff members who worked on it, though they will still experience a single involuntary orgasm at the sight of any impact Frames. An easy way to distinguish them is by their uncontrollable response of disgust when someone mentions they know about anime production because they watched Shiro Bako. Next up, we have the Manga Reader. These are a mysterious species as we know they exist, but they only really surface the moment an anime is announced, then they all come out of their rocks and proclaim that they've been looking forward to this adaptation for forever, only for the rest of the anime community to wonder where the fuck they've been this entire time. A true Manga Reader doesn't have time for anime and has realised that reading manga is a far more efficient way to consume as much of it as possible. What makes them hard to distinguish is that they may look, act, and talk like anime fans. However, in reality, they will just watch one episode of an anime where they have read the source material and then pretend to everyone like they actually watched the whole damn thing. That's right, manga readers. We know. Next, we get to the Fujoshi and. Only one, one minute, minute of time, time will you be pleased. I repeat, I repeat, only one, one male male at a time. time. Fujoshis are obsessed with men, though have probably never interacted with one in their lifetime. Studies have shown they gain their lifeblood by shipping any two males who are within a 10 meter radius of each other. Failure to observe any and all ships for an extended period of time will cause them to dissolve into a messy goop of gay porn. It is said that every female fan possesses a dormant Fujo gene, even if they haven't activated it to become a full-blown Fujoshi. The early effects of this gene can be seen when females grow an unhealthy addiction to Mystic Messenger, finding out their hearts skip to beat seeing gifs of beautiful Asian boys almost kissing, and fully completing their activation when they can sing the first verse of Unravel by heart. Last, but not least, we have the Cosplayer. These are the breeds which have the largest exposure through pictures that have been spread online, though it is not commonly known that after a photo shoot is finished, they will disintegrate back into their natural form of a pile of bobby pins and fabric tape. While most humans live by a standard 7-day Gregorian calendar, cosplayers will instead track their time in relation to how many days they have left until their next anime convention, and thus exist in a perpetual state of panic trying to figure out how they're going to complete their next costume in time. Recently, cosplaying has evolved from just a side hobby to something people can actually do for their full-time job. If you're a girl, then all you need to do is grow a small but dedicated following and you may be able to turn this into your full-time profession through a combination of Patreon, streaming, and selling prints. And if you're a guy, then all you need to do is...
Yeah, all right, good luck with that, mate. This concludes our tour of the modern zoo of anime fans. Remember, the anime craze has spread far further than we all imagined, and knowledge is key to stopping this plague. If you suspect that anyone amongst you may watch anime, please inform your nearest police officer immediately so they can be quarantined and destroyed before they are able to contaminate anyone with their shit taste. Have a lovely day. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you again to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring this video. If you want to give that a shot, just click the link in the doobly-doo and it will bring you to whatever store your device is on. And also, thank you very much to Robert Harnborg, Basil, Patrick Madsen, Laoken, and everyone else on Patreon for helping to support me for this month and making this video possible. I see a lot of you have been posting me pictures of your motherfucking tea mugs which have now been posted out, so hopefully you guys are enjoying your tea or coffee in, in these mugs. And also you can watch some of my other videos or follow me on Twitter or Instagram for some of my other shenanigans. But aside from that, until my next video, I've been Gigak and I will see you all next time.